2-3-629. The Graber Roberts matter is on the docket for today. The Iker Roberts matter had actually been removed from the docket because Mr. Roberts had been unable to serve his motion to terminate the PPO on Mr. Iker. However, this morning I was advised that Mr. Iker was with Mr. Graber and he was willing to proceed with that hearing as well. I see Mr. Roberts on the call. Mr. Roberts, can you see and hear me, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Great. And I see Mr. Graber, are you on the call, sir? Yes, Your Honor. And you can hear me, sir, correct? Yes. And is Mr. Iker there with you? Yes. And Mr. Iker, if you could respond, can you hear me, sir? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Iker, my understanding is uh, you did receive the motion in the mail to terminate the PPO that Mr. Roberts filed. Is that correct? Yes. And you are ready to proceed today? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to do both of these at the same time because they involve similar facts and similar parties. In both of these cases, uh, a request was made for a personal protection order. Mr. Graber made that request and I issued the personal protection order against Mr. Roberts on September 21st of 23. At about the same time, Mr. Iker made a request for a personal protection order against Mr. Roberts. And also on September 21st of 23, I issued that personal protection order. When a party files a request to terminate, and in both of these cases, Mr. Roberts has, is the respondent and he is the one who has filed the request to terminate, the way the law is written, the petitioner, not Mr. Roberts, but the petitioner, so Mr. Graber and Mr. Eicher actually have the burden of proof to establish the need for the personal protection order. And so I'm going to begin with Mr. Graber. I'm assuming, Mr. Graber, that you would like to provide the court with testimony to explain why you need your personal protection order against Mr. Roberts. Yes. All right. If you would... Yeah, if you would raise your right hand, I would ask you to affirm that you will tell the truth. As against our religion to swear, but I will say the truth. Thank you. That's why I said it that way. I'm aware that you will not swear, but you will affirm it, correct? Yes. Right. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down. And if you would start, please, by stating your name. Andy Graber. All right, Mr. Graber. Assume I know nothing about you and Mr. Roberts. Tell me why it is that you believe you need a personal protection order against him. We started out, we was uh, neighbors. We never had no issues, friends. Then we built a pallet shop. And then that's when we... We started with the project, and that's when he came onto our property, and that's when he did the, the gestures and all the things in front of the public, in front of my women and in front of my wife and children and everybody. I'm just going to interrupt for just a sec, sir. When did you start the pallet shop? This was in 2000 of 20. Okay, so December of 2020. All right, so three years ago, you start the pallet shop. When did uh, yep. when did Mr. Roberts start making gestures? Start coming onto your property? Like a couple of days after we began pouring concrete. Okay, and what what did he say? And I know some of it may be hard to repeat, but I'm, I'm going to need you to tell me. He was just saying how it's at the wrong spot when he shouldn't have put it. How he's going to have war and destroy our life. And then how he was saying to suck this, suck this. And we had, there was another one of our neighbors there. He was reaching down and they told him to leave. Okay. Well, she did leave then. And then from there on out, we just had problems ever since. 
and you need to tell me what those problems were. Like, let's, let's work backwards. You made this request back in September. What happened that caused you to come to court and request the personal protection order? Okay. okay. Then one was October of 21. I was walking past his property, going down the phone where we do our phone calls. It was raining. <clears throat> I had my black suit on, umbrella and stuff. Then oh, he was out firing his stove. And he had a poker in his hand. He was tending his stove. And then all of a sudden I heard this talking. And then he said, well, a bunch of black niggers and then take this poker and stick it up your ass. Okay. And then from there, it just going by be constantly of yelling and the biggest then one of the biggest things and the one night we had a church service there and had his uh we got two decent speakers and playing songs i'll fuck you up and the kids were scared and just recently everybody that was going by was going by he was yelling, fuck you, fuck you, stuff like that. That's when uh, we called the cops, and the state police recommended us to do this PPO, which I was not aware of that being even out there because we didn't know that was even available. But then we started checking into it, and then that's why we decided to go this route. All right. And that continued up until you came to court and made the request? Yes. Anything else you want me to know, sir? No. Great. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to turn to Mr. Iker. So, Mr. Iker, can you still hear me, sir? Yes. I'm going to I'm going to get you to affirm to tell the truth. So, if you would raise your hand, right hand, and just affirm that you will tell the truth. Yes. Thank you, sir. And I'll tell start. the truth. Thank you, Mr. Eicher. If you would start by stating your name. Samuel Eicher. All right, Mr. Eicher. Similarly to Mr. Um, Grable, I need you to assume I know nothing and tell me why it is that you believe that you need a, a personal protection order. Uh, it's some of the stuff is similar to Mr. Graber's here. We, we've been, we had no problems. We've been friends as far as I know since that ballot shot went up. And it wasn't, I don't remember the date, maybe three months after the, it was down to Mr. Graber's. I had a truck come in early morning, 4.30. And coincidentally, his dad comes down harassing me, telling me that this is ridiculous. This can't happen, this can't go on. You need to cut your engine, you need to stop this. And I, Mr. Ritchie was on my property. I had to tell him to back off. He threatened to kill me and my family. And same thing as Mr. Graber yelling at me, cussing at my children. The children are all shook up, scared, using that rough language. And the music, I, my, my children were exposed to that music, these big speakers. We don't, we don't teach them that kind of stuff. And then they're asking me questions about that music. Then what I'm what am I supposed to tell them? You know that's that's why that's why I want the PPO. Okay, and these things have happened for the last since. Give me a time frame over which that you had these issues with with Mr. Robert. Three years. Okay, with the most recent issues happening just prior to you asking for the personal protection order. Is that correct? Three weeks. Okay. What's that? Sorry about that. The most recent incidents happened when? <clears throat> Three weeks ago. Okay. Have they continued since you got the personal protection order? No. So the personal protection order has worked? Yes. All right. 
Anything else you want me to know, sir? No. Great. Thank you. Mr. Roberts, I'm assuming that you would like to testify. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Roberts, if you would raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down. And if you would start, please, by stating your name. Richard Paul Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Go right ahead, sir. I uh, guess, um, as most of what they have testified, uh, most all of this happened during 2020 and 2021. So none of this is recent. Um, so uh, I'm really confused on this whole uh, PPO on something that happened two and a half to three years ago. Um, for Andy here, um, I drove for him and his kids um, all the way up until uh, the end of 20, uh, or 2020 until COVID hit. Uh, so yes, we were friends with all of them. Um, yes, at the end of 2020, I did come over and uh, talk to his father-in-law, who is in charge of all of that entire family, uh, about them building a pallet factory five foot from our property line, less than a half a football field away from my bedroom window. Ever since that time, my sleep has been destroyed. My house has been destroyed. I've had three ER visits, one 72 hour mental hold for almost committing suicide for between the semi trucks constantly going in and out at all hours. And then they also refused to talk about the puppy mill that went on during 2021, the entire year where for 24 seven nonstop, I had to hear the most disgusting abusiveness of animals that any one person could ever want to hear. The pictures that you see on the AS, uh, ASPCA commercials, I had to listen to that for a year. It also drove my mother into two weeks into a mental hospital as well. They have destroyed our lives. Um, I haven't talked to Mr. Graber since March 20th of 2021. So again, I don't understand um, how any of that is relevant now. Um, as he testified, most everything happened then. Uh, I don't understand this. Um, a lot of this nonsense in which they're saying I'm threatening their family and this, that, and other stuff. This never happened. I'd love to see some video evidence proving that any of this happened. Um, now, I'm a 42-year-old man. You know, they got an entire family. It's me versus all of you know, these people. Um, you know, that just doesn't make sense. Um, as far as their kids being afraid, their kids are too young to even know what English is. They don't even uh, speak English yet. So, again, that uh, just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, Let's see, with Sam, um, the last time I had contact with Sam was March 9th of this year. And he approached me while I was on my property. He approached me and my mother trying to get us to sign a smell abatement paper so that they could build even more and add more um, cows or pigs to the property, making the smell, which is already um, pretty close to intolerable, uh, even worse. Uh, we have told him no on that, and ever since then, um, they have been extremely upset and mad because we would not let them build anymore um, to continue to destroy our lives here. Um, I never went on his prop Sam's property when that semi-truck came in. Again, that was early 2021. Yes, my father went over there and asked them to shut it off because he was woke up too. As this truck comes in at 4.30 in the morning, Jake breaking in front of the house, and it's like a bomb going off in the house. It woke everybody up. The entire house shakes. Stuff's falling off the walls. This still continues to this date. I've even got a video of one here just recently coming in at 5.50 in the morning. Jake breaking in, um, and it just wakes everybody up. The whole house shakes. I've had to board up the window in my room with double boarding and insulation and that to try to even protect myself from that. 
I have horrible mental problems. I have ADHD. I am autistic. I have insomnia. And this stuff has driven that up. I've had anxiety and panic attacks multiple times to the hospital on all of this. So the one who's being harassed here is me. Um, I've talked to the county supervisor. There is no zoning and no ordinances at all in the county. Thus, this is how they are getting away with this. Also, that also can confront with the stereo stuff. I have the right in First Amendment to play whatever I want. It's never in the middle of the night. My parents go to bed at 10 o'clock and it's never been in the early morning. If I have to listen to constant dogs barking at semi trucks while I'm outside, I'm going to drown it out. Period. Um, I have the right to do so. I should not have to be forced to have to listen to this stuff constantly all day long. Um, I mean, it even vibrates my shed that I, uh, the, the my shop that I even work out of restoring classic cars and other items of mine. Um, as I said, this has been three years of this going on. Um, the most recent thing that they are um, complaining about that had happened a few weeks ago was that I had put a sign up in my yard as they had put in the complaint. That sign was up all days, not on their church religious day in which they are trying to claim in their thing. That sign was stolen in less than two weeks on a Sunday morning by them or their family that was on my property. So they came onto my property and stole my sign. And that sign was my old business sign. That sign was $250 um, that they came up in on my property. But what did the sign say? This sign said exactly what they have said. It is what said pure evil Amish Bishop. The reason that sign went up, that sign went up at three o'clock in the morning after a semi truck pulled in across the street from me at 1230 at night and sat there idling all night long until it left at about seven, eight o'clock in the morning. This is now the second time in which they've done it? that. Huh? Did you see who took the sign? No, it was at five, six in the morning. It was night. Yeah, nobody was up yet. Now uh, they were going by to go to church early. They, they go by to go to church that early in the morning. So it was gone by the time we got up around eight o'clock. Anything else? And it was there that Saturday night. Okay. I didn't um, mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. If you have more that you want me to know. Um, so uh, on top of that, so on, that happened on a Sunday. I did not learn about that the sign was gone until a Tuesday. And then at night, um, with Amish going by, I have no idea who. It was dark. I was nowhere near the road. Uh, as a couple of them went by, I went, thou shall not steal. Where is my sign? I never threatened anybody. I never used profound language. I used exactly that statement right there. They then proceeded to call the police. The police showed up. And before they even knew who I was, I was arrested. I was arrested on a warrant from them from March 20th, 2021. The reason I knew nothing about this warrant at all from 2021 is that the address on the warrant was Mr. Graber's address. So then I was arrested by total surprise, had no idea about a two and a half year warrant. Two days later, after this, I get served this warrant, they then proceed to throw this protective order again for stuff that happened back in 2021. And then they compound this on me. The reason they are all doing this right now is we are the only not Amish on that entire side of the road. We're the only ones left. They have bought everything out and they are forcibly trying to force our family out of there so that they can have everything on that side of the road. Because we are the only ones left that are not Amish. And what that's what's going on. For, Mr. Roberts. What was that, Your Honor? What was the warrant for? Uh, the warrant was for trespassing and stalking, which they say is uh, harassment and stuff that I had said in 2021 to a Mr. Silas Ecker, which is 
Andy's father-in-law and Sam's father. And what is the status of that case? Uh, that is going to pre-trial the 24th of this month. I've hired an attorney to fight that um, because okay. again, the, the meeting that happened on the 20, on March 20th of 2021, I stopped, I don't know who all was there, but it was a bunch of them. I stopped to talk to Silas, not Andy, not Sam, but Silas. Um, in tears, crying, it had been three months of almost no sleep, um, sleep deprived, hallucinating because of sleep depravity. I had already been into uh, Hillsdale Hospital for that just before then. And I pleaded with them to please stop this in the early morning and to please do something about the puppy mill. And that is when Silas looked at me and goes, this is not our problem and good, I hope you die. And that is the last time I have spoke with any of these, but Sam who has come over and approached me while I've been on my property to talk to me. Um, he has talked to me a couple of times since then saying that you know he didn't want no fights, that we were all good with each other. And like I said, he had talked with me March 9th of this year, trying to get me to sign that paper. So I had no idea that there was anything going on between me and Sam. As far as I knew, when I talked to him in March, uh, everything was copacetic. So oh, thank you. Thank this you. is all stuff that's been brought up from years ago. What does it have to do with now? Thank you, sir. I'm going to go back to you, Mr. Graber. Can you um, tell me, I know you, you, you've gone over it. I'd like to go over it again. The recent events that have caused you to file for this personal protection order. Go ahead, sir. You mean the recent? I want to know what happened just prior to September 21st. Something caused you, after this having gone on since 2020, to do this in September of 23. What happened? The yelling was the biggest thing. I just felt threatened with my kids. Me personally, I don't have nothing. And not that I got scared. I mean, I, I'm afraid for my family. I'm trying to look out for my kids, but because of the yelling. All right, thank you. And Minister Iker, what was your reason for filing when you did? Uh, for yelling at me and my family. And that happened. That was the, the reason. The reason that's what the that's what flipped the trigger. And that happened just before you filed. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. The court has had a chance to hear from um, both of the petitioners, Mr. Graber and Mr. Eicher. I've also now had a chance to hear from the respondent, Mr. Roberts. Uh, it is up to the court to judge the credibility of the parties and make a determination as to whether or not it has been, it has been established that a personal protection order is warranted. And I have done just that. It sounds to me, and, and I, I can sympathize with Mr. Roberts for his situation. Um, I was assuming there was no zoning in that, that area. It would be an extremely difficult place to be in. And um, I can appreciate why he is upset about the things that his neighbors are doing. I would hope that Mr. Graber and Mr. Eicher will take some of that into consideration as they decide how they are going to be handling things on their property. However, I do believe that there is a basis for there to be a personal protection order in both of these matters. I find that there has been enough contact established and recently enough in addition to what has happened um, several years ago that would justify these personal protection orders being in place. In addition to that, I see no reason whatsoever for these parties to be in contact with each other. 